My name is Rachel Atkins. I'm a playwright and a teaching artist, and this is a lesson about helping you to write your own play. Today, we're going to be looking at character objectives. All you're going to need is something to write with and something to write on. This could be paper and pen, or it could be a computer, something electronic. You could even use your phone if you want. In a play, characters should always have objectives. An objective is a goal. It's something that the character needs or wants. And it's especially strong if they need it or want it from another character in the play. Characters having different objectives in the same play is what creates problems or conflicts, and that's what makes a play interesting. Now, there are four elements that make an objective really strong. The first element is that an objective should be personally important. If the character wants something, but it's okay if they don't get it, it's not that big a deal, it's not strong enough, it's not important enough. The character should really, really want it, and they should have a reason why. The second element that makes an objective a really strong objective is that it should be specific. The more specific, the better. So for example, a character might want world peace. That's a big objective. It's, a bi it's an important objective, but it's big and broad. How do you achieve world peace over the course of a single play? Thinking about how you can break down that big objective of wanting world peace into something smaller will help your character's objective be stronger. So for example, in this play, this character who wants world peace, their objective in the play might be they want permission to attend a rally, or they want to get somebody to donate money to a cause. That makes the objective more specific. And it's still related to that big objective of world peace. The third thing that makes an objective really strong is that it should be immediate. They should need it and want it right now. If they can get it later or next week or you know, sometime next month, it's not, it's not as important. It's not as pressing. So it should be something that they need and want right away. The fourth element that makes a really strong objective is that there should be consequences. If the character doesn't get what they want, something's got to happen. Something's got to happen that the character does not want to have happen. So again, they've got a really strong reason why they need that important, immediate, specific objective, why they need that right now. So again, a strong objective, important, immediate, specific consequences. And this is kind of built in. I don't even count it as the, full, as the fifth, but I probably should. They need a good reason why they want it. No matter what a character's objective is, there are certain things that we all do to try to get what we want. These actions are called tactics. So think for a minute about what the things are that you do when there's something that you want from somebody else. We're gonna brainstorm a list of these because these will help you in your writing. I'm gonna give you a few suggestions to start, but you should definitely think about what are the things that you do and add on to this list. So some tactics that we might use no matter what it is that we want. We might ask for what we want. We might try to convince somebody else to give us what we want or to believe in our point of view. We might beg. We might demand. We might blackmail. We might cry. We might bargain. We might negotiate or make a deal. Those are not all the possible tactics there are, but those are some to start. So I'm gonna pause for a moment while you jot those down and add on to the list for yourself. So, now you know what makes a strong objective. You have some ideas about things that characters might do to get their objective. Now, I'm going to give you an objective, and you are going to come up with two different characters who might want it. The objective is you have two different characters who each want $100. They need $100. So think about 
Who might those people be? What might they need it for? Remember, the reasons that they need that $100 should be immediate, they should be specific, and they should be important. There should be consequences if the characters don't get the $100. You're gonna come up with two different characters, and those characters actually don't need to be connected in any way. In fact, it's better if they don't have anything to do with one another. If you did the previous lesson with me and you've got a brainstormed list of characters, you could look back on that list and see if it gives you any ideas, but you don't have to if you didn't do that lesson or if you have some new ideas right now. You're going to come up with two different characters. They each have the same objective. They each need that $100, but they should have totally different reasons for wanting it. I'm gonna give you a minute to come up with your two different characters, and then we're gonna do some writing with those characters. So really think about coming up with two different characters who are interesting to you, who don't have to have anything to do with one another, who have really strong, immediate, specific, important reasons for needing that $100. Okay, so you have two different characters who each need that $100, who each have that same objective. Now you're going to write a scene between these two characters. In this scene, they both spot a $100 bill on the ground in between them at the exact same moment. So you're going to write the dialogue between them, the, thing, the conversation that they have going back and forth where they each try to get the other one to give them that $100. You're going to decide which character speaks first, and then the dialogue is going to go back and forth in between the two characters for each line. I'm gonna be giving you a particular structure that gives you kind of an arc for the scene. So you're gonna follow the structure to write the scene, and it usually helps you come up with a resolution to the conflict, a resolution to the problem by the end, although it's fine if you don't. You're going to be writing one continuous scene, even though what I'm about to show you has the dialogue broken up in different sections. So you're writing one continuous scene between these two characters. That's a conversation between them where they're each trying to get what they want. They're each trying to get that $100. When you write dialogue, the way you write it is the, you put the character's name, and then you put a colon, and then you write what they say. You don't need to use quotation marks in dialogue. I'm going to show you the structure of the scene, and I'll also talk you through it. This way you can copy it down or you can take a picture of it and then you can write the scene at your own pace. If you happen to be doing this lesson with somebody else, you can actually do this scene where you each take one character's point of view and you pass the paper back and forth between you. So instead of having one writer write for both characters, you can each write from one character's point of view. So it would be sort of like you were having a conversation except you'd be doing it in writing instead of by talking to each other. If you happen to have somebody else to write with and you feel like doing it that way, that's great, do it like that. If you don't, no worries. You can do this whole thing all on your own and you get to represent both characters' points of view. So now I'm gonna show you the structure and while you're looking at the structure on the, on the screen, I'm gonna talk you through what it does. Here we go. In this structure, the first 10 lines going back and forth between the characters each character gets four to six words per line. So the first character speaks, and again, you're deciding who's speaking first. The first character speaks, they say something between four and six words. Then the next character answers, and they get four to six words. Then the first character answers them four to six words. And this goes back and forth for the first 10 lines. For the next, four lines, lines 11 to 15, each character gets one to two words per line. So again, they're taking turns, speaking back and forth, but each time they can only say one or two words. In the next set, lines 15 to 18, they can say one word each, going back and forth. Then, 
they each get a little bit of a monologue. So they each get one line where they can say 20 or more words. So they're going to talk for a little bit longer. So this can be an opportunity for the characters to really say what they have to say. After the two short monologues, lines 21 to 26, get four to six words per line. Again, just like in the, in the very beginning of the scene. And then the last four lines, lines 27 to 30, each character gets one to two words per line. By the last line, by line 30, your scene is over. Now you know how you're going to write your scene. So you're going to go and write it at your own pace. When you're done, try to find somebody who will read it out loud with you because plays are meant to be spoken out loud and it would be great for you to get to hear what your words sound like. Even better would be if you could find two people to read it out loud for you so that you can just listen. That's the end of this lesson, but if you want to bring this scene with you to my next lesson, we're gonna actually do something with this scene that you are about to write. So I hope to see you next time with this scene so we can do some adding on to it. Again, my name is Rachel Atkins. Thank you so much for joining me for this playwriting lesson, and I hope to see you next time.